Hi team, welcome on board to the basics of information technology. This is going to be an exciting one. For those of us that have zero knowledge of IT, this is for you. And if you have some experience, let's just brainstorm together and refresh ourselves in general. So let's get started. So we're going to start today by just discussing a little bit about some of the basics, the foundational piece of IT in general. And the intent is to get us to a space whereby we all feel comfortable enough to understand the basics of IT and we just have fun doing it together. So let us get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just what exactly is information technology in general. And uh, we're going to talk about the general overview of information technology and uh, the historic context a little bit and just have fun doing it. Let's go. So what is information technology? So in simple summary, it's just some keys to working with data using computers, softwares, network in a digital world. Don't overthink this. All I'm saying is that it's an ecosystem of many components together. All of us today, you are part of the ecosystem of information technology. You are using WhatsApp, Facebook, your laptop, your phone, as you watch me right now. So we are already part of that process. But today I'll just refresh you a little bit, right? Um, so we'll talk about computers and mostly we refer to how we use the computers, the software, the network to work with data, the data we use day to day, right? Like your social security, your personal information and any sensitive information, all of these are considered part of the data. So for the software side of things, right? This includes software programs out there. We all download softwares, right? We download applications, we download them. Um, databases, we download different things in our day-to-day -day life. So if you use Uber today, you probably downloaded the application called Uber. Or if you are using WhatsApp, you downloaded an application called WhatsApp. It's the same thing, right? At the end of the day. Then we talk about storing and sharing data. We can all agree at the end of the day, whatever data we work on, we need to have a place to store it. So anything we talk about storing, we are thinking of database. How do we store our data? So I can bet you, all of the data you use today is being stored somewhere. And that is simply a database, okay? That are the components of an IT infrastructure. And the infrastructure will just be a combination of all the elements together, hardware, software, data, would be core components of what makes an IT infrastructure. Let's think again. IT infrastructure is just the combination of all of these elements makes the infrastructure. Hardware, we can all agree, we are talking about the physical part of IT, right? So your computer, your servers, your phone, your wearable devices, all of these are considered hardware. Softwares will be programs and applications that runs on those hardware. So if you are using WhatsApp, you are using a banking application, those are the software in general. Then data, we can agree, these are the information we share, like our documents, our family pictures, our videos, all of those will be considered part of the data. All right, let's talk about computer systems a little bit. So elements in those computer systems, most of us don't care about all these details, right? But at the back end, we have something called CPU, Central Processing Unit. It runs and performs all the calculation, everything we do, the Central Processing Unit does all of those for us. Also, you see what we call RAM. You know, this stores data that the Central Processing Unit is working on stores it in the memory, right? At the end of the day, then we have the storage itself. The storage saves like our files, our programs, and all of the key elements we need to store in our system. It's all part of the ecosystem of IT. So we don't see that, but it works at the back end. All right, operating system. In simple terms, the operating system makes sure that all the hardware components and the software components work together. Don't forget, we have the hardware, we have the software. So hardware will be like your phone, software like your WhatsApp. The operating system allows both of them to work together at the end of the day. All right, so common operating system, I just want you to know to any time. Of course, we all know, well, you are using OS, uh, uh, operating system for Apple, iOS, then we are for Android, right? So it could be for those at the mobile device level. But in general, I want you to know too, the first one, just remember Windows, 
The second one, remember Unix. Let's take it again. The two major operating systems out there that most companies will use today, you will know is normally Windows, which is Microsoft, or Unix. All right. So remember those two at any point in time. So networking basic, do I think the word networking, right? In simple terms, it's a combination of multiple devices speaking with each other, just like we network together, right? We connect together. So when you are on your own network, I bet you, you connected your phone, your wearable devices, your iPad, your kids' um, devices, your TVs and your fridge, your ring or your bell, all of those are connected to the network. So it's just a connection of multiple devices. Some key things I wanted to just know, there is something called LAN, local area network. So your home front is considered a local area network, right? You connected your devices within your home or office. One wide area network is saying, okay, we are connecting between big cities, big geography. So your workplace today will be considered like a one because you have multiple locations and they need to speak with each other. Another one you all know is the router. So the routers receive data packages and they forward them to the correct network. It, it will um, get a packet from your home. It will route it to the right network. That's what it does really. Then switches. Switches just connect computers to your local area network in general. All right. So it's actually a physical device, right? That allows you to connect like several printers together or laptop together. So it will be like a switch that can help us do those connections. So two things to take away. One, the router that helps us forward to the correct network. Then switches that collects different variations of devices together so that it can effectively maintain them within the network to communicate in general. So we'll keep it at that for now. Then we all can agree the internet, the web browser, those are like everybody uses today, the World Wide Web at the moment. Then within the World Wide Web, we have what's called protocols. So for example, when you browse, we all use HTTP dot dot slash slash browse. Now, if you don't see S, which means secure, it means it's not a secure, you know, link. So be careful. We're not going to touch that right in general, but these are languages to communicate on the internet. There are so many other protocols out there, but always remember when we talk of protocol, it's just the way to communicate. Okay. There are some other protocols out there for the purpose of our, our class. We're not going to go into all the protocols, but there are a couple of protocols out there. There is one for TCP IP. There is one for DNS, don't care about all that for now, okay? But at the minimum, understand the protocols allow communication between computers or the internet. So the popular one will just stick with HTTP and HTTPS because that's what we all use. Now, if you are browsing to your bank and you realize there's no S run from it, it's probably fraud, okay? Just some general best practice. Then data and databases, right? Data refers to information that our computers can work with, like our text, photos, videos, any, you know, chats, those are considered data. Databases are just storage information um, gathering places. So it's just a storage really at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's organized system for storing data, you know, and the systems at times you will see like Oracle database, DB2, Microsoft SQL SQL. So you have a lot of databases out there today. Most of them today are even in the cloud. Okay. Cybersecurity, we can all agree. These are very, very key at the moment, right? So we're making sure we can protect our organization from external malicious actors in general. So some key things we just take away from here is we're seeing how do we ensure confidentiality of our data, the integrity of our data and the availability of the data. So you might have seen antivirus software just to provide protection against malicious actors. Firewalls are just to monitor a network and block any unauthorized access to the network. As simple as that. There's strong password. We can agree that gone are the days we can just use our password as password. Now we have to make sure we do our due diligence to put good, strong password in general. Programming and development, keep it simple. Everything we use today, somebody wrote a program about it. We don't need to know programming, okay? But know that these are 
the languages that are used to build everything we are using today, right? So your WhatsApp, your Facebook, somebody wrote a code to make it happen. And now there are so many scripts or AI tools that can build code for us. So I'm not going to worry about that at all. AI, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, we all know the emerging technology we've seen, chat GPT. Now, it really involves creating machines capable of human-like intelligence. This AI tool that is so cool right now. So, you know, um, I, I want us to plug in and understand this big time because it is taking over a lot of businesses. At the minimum, I want you to also be able to be very savvy user. Machine learning is a type of AI where computers learn from data to make predictions. Really, it's amazing right now. Some AI systems out there, we have LLM, which is like a huge uh, learning machine, you know. We have ANI, you know, artificial neural intelligence, artificial um, super intelligent, artificial general intelligence. And this refers to level of AI capabilities, right? So it starts with neural intelligence, which is where we are right now. Then general intelligence, where we are hoping to get to. Super intelligence becomes something, ooh, it means the AIs will be making decisions creepy and scary, but that's where it's going to in the long term. Okay. Cloud computing, some things I wanted to know. Everything now is going to the cloud. We can agree on that at the minimum. So when I say cloud, don't look at this kind of oh, cloud. But all I'm saying is that, you know, it's like a database kept somewhere with a lot of capacity. Most people are moving to the cloud, you know, right now. So most you would have heard of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. So most of the application we use today are in the cloud somewhere being hosted. Okay. Now, common types of cloud. Of course, we can agree there's private, there's public. Public means it's public, right? Private means, yeah, it's restricted to just me. That hybrid is a combination of both. The public naturally is less expensive. Private becomes more expensive. Hybrid is a combination of, okay, certain part of my business, I use some private, then I could use some public to kind of balance the cost, the risk, and the scalability in general. So, but that's really the gist about cloud. So IT career trends, of course, cybersecurity is a huge one, right? It's a massive one out there. IT supports programming, database, product development. There are so many tons of them out there today. Cloud, AI. Um, cyber is a huge one for sure. You know, it has a lot of capacity, potential from an AI angle, cloud angle. Every product angle, every part of the world today definitely needs security and cyber. Ethics and responsibility, there's a lot of responsibility required in terms of privacy, ensuring that malicious actors don't steal sensitive information and honesty and all right now, because of the AI model, we have to also think about the bias, AI bias, to ensure that when data models are built, it is not being biased to certain demography, races, religion, or ethnicity. It's a big one right now that the world is really taking a look at. Big time. And um, that is the summary of um, the basics and the foundation of IT. I look forward to seeing you in the next class. We'll talk soon.